Good morning, my name is David Casella, nurseryman at Earthworks in Jacksonville, Florida. Here today to talk to you about a unique group of plants called cycads, C-Y-C-A-D-S. Uh, cycads are often confused with palm trees. As you can see, there's a grouping of palms here because of their trunk-like and pinnate leaf type, also mistaken or confused by uh, with ferns as well. The three cycads that we carry here, the first one I wanted to show you, again, is the Zamia furfurcia, the cardboard cycad, available in a three gallon and a larger seven gallon upon request and availability. And then our native one, Zamia floridana or integrifolia. This is the Kunti cycad, three gallon. And then we also have the Cycas revoluta, the common sago cycad. Cycads uh, date way back in our plant fossil record. They're actually the oldest seed bearing plants called gymnosperms, unlike uh, angiosperms with their flowering trees and plants. Uh, these have they're separate male and female plants, and they produce an open seed, which is which what a gymnosperm is. It's an open seed to the air. It has to be pollinated by either uh, bugs, a certain beetle for each species of cycad helps to pollinate them, or you can manually pollinate them. But these date back uh, nearly to 300 million years ago when dinosaurs existed. So they're very historic and very a uh, diverse group of plants. Uh, they were a main food source back in the uh, Pervian time period uh, and survived uh, one of the Earth's mass extinctions. A lot of them are listed on the red species plant list as being endangered and there's even several that are extinct. But fossil records have been found on all seven continents. Obviously when uh, the earth looked different than it did now. Uh, they existed one time on Antarctica. They still have fossils that are found in Antarctica, but today in 2018 they exist on uh, six of the seven continents that we have on the planet. Uh, most of your uh, genera, uh, there's 10 accepted genera and then uh, approximately 355 species. Uh, your Zamia, which I have in front of me, Zamia floridana or Zamia integrifolia is native to the southeast United States. Uh, there's approximately 79 species of this genera Zamia. This is the native one to the southeast United States called the Kunti, C-O-O-N-T-I-E. It doesn't typically form a trunk, it's mostly a shrub, uh, reproducing by, of course, its seed as a gymnosperm and also by asexual reproduction or budding, puts, puts off pups or offsets. Uh, this is a very good plant for northern Florida, very cold hardy. And uh, this is an old specimen that I saved from our recycled area and uh, about 11 months ago, and it's put out a whole new foliage of leaves. Then this is another uh, Zamia furfurcia, native to Mexico, also known as the cardboard cycad. You can hear the leaves, they're very thick and leathery and glossy. Uh, these also are mostly subterrain. They'll get a little nut on them. I'll show you later in the video of some that we planted out by our entrance uh, by the waterfall and you can actually see the caudex. By the way, the trunk of a cycad is called a caudex, C-A-U-D-E-X. And then thirdly, I wanted to show you, this is a common one uh, that can be found nearly anywhere, but we carry this third one here at Earthworks. It's called Cycus revoluta. This is native to southern areas of Japan, so it's an Asian cycad. This uh, can develop a trunk on it, and mature specimen starts to seed at about 15 to 20 years old. I also want to tell you with cycads, they have separate male and female plants, and males produce a cone, like an excessively large pine cone, and a female produces the eggs from the ovaries. Uh, actually, cycads are more closely related to conifers, gymnosperms, than they are to palms and ferns. So, so they're far on the other end of the plant spectrum compared to palms and ferns. Uh, when they grow, unlike palms, which put out one new uh, frond or new foliage leaf per uh, cycle, the, the uh, cycads 
put out, a, it's called a flush. And usually when they're young, they put out one, it's a seedling, it germinates, one leaf comes up. And then the older it gets, the more number of uh, new fronds or leaves come out at once. Uh, some of them produce 25 to 30 uh, new flushes of leaves. And sometimes a flush can happen annually or uh, twice a year, depending on the, the climate that the cycad's growing in and of course the size and species. Then I wanted to show you, uh, this is Dayun edule with a very nice caudex on it. It's very hard right now for me to tell if it's a male or female until it uh, gets to the coning or seeding age, but it's native to the uh, eastern part of Mexico, Veracruz. They also call it the chestnut cycad. Uh, very similar to Cycus revoluta, a little more lighter green and more upright, but every uh, uh, Dayun has a uh, caudex that'll grow into a trunk and it's, it's comprised of like a corky wood and then for, uh, due to evolution and survival they have little spines, little protective parts on the leaves and the caudex and branches just to protect it from environmental danger and uh, predators. I wanted to mention the high importance of every time a person purchases or grows a cycad, you're not only conserving but you're restoring uh, what a lot of them are truly threatened from habitation, uh, development and also illegal poaching around the world. Uh, but every time you purchase one or grow one, you're, you're doing the, the plan a very good uh, service by conserving it and we all in the Palm and Cycad Society truly appreciate that. This is our Encephalardus ferox, our Kazi or Zuland cycad for, uh, native to Mozambique, the southeast coast of Africa. Most of the green uh, Encephalardus are more closer to the equator, uh, equatorial, the green citing they're more temperate cycads and then in southern Africa you have the blue collection uh, as far as uh, cycads go, the Encephalardus Hortus, which is a blue dwarf, Trispinosis, uh, Princeps, uh, and one neat thing about cycads that I didn't mention earlier, uh, they're very good xeriscape plants, meaning uh, full sun, uh, drought-like conditions, and uh, temperature extremes, uh, very easy to care for. Uh, I recommend you, you fertilize them occasionally if there's any uh, soil deficiencies that develop. Uh, the best fertilizer I've done research on for cycads is a fish emulsion uh, liquid. Uh, they seem to really benefit from the natural resources and elements of the earth. Here's the second of the cycads that I brought in from St. Petersburg to plant here at our nursery. This is called Encephalardus gratis. Uh, you can see this has got a nice developing caudex on it and since I planted it here six months ago, July of 2018, it's put out a flush of two new uh, fronds that have hardened off. But you can see how large the leaflets are and there's about three to four spines on either side. And this is uh, what I call a macro cycad. This specimen here will eventually grow maybe about 15 or 20 feet of uh, corky woody trunk on it. It's, it. it's a giant one. It's from Malawi, Mozambique, South Africa. Its redless species is invulnerable due to, of course, again, habitat destruction. And another thing I'd like to mention, there's a big problem, especially in uh, the African continent, South Africa and East Africa, with uh, poachers. Uh, poachers go in the native stands and illegally dig up and remove and uh, you know, take them and then they sell them to collectors or nurseries because there's a, a, a big volume of money involved with these older specimens. As they become extinct, they become more and more valuable. I uh, just wanted to mention that too. You could see a lot of the videos on, on YouTube. Uh, the green scorpions of South Africa make uh, a lot of large cycad busts. They go on uh, a journey, like a safari journey, and uh, go look for po illegal poachers to stop uh, them from taking these because they might eventually all become extinct in the wild, so they're very, very vulnerable species. Once again, in Cephalardus gratis, green cycad from Mozambique, South Africa. Wanted to walk out to the front of the property to show the four beautiful specimens of Zamia furafuracea, the cardboard cycad, uh, a Mexican native. This one actually is a male. You could see an old cone here from earlier in the year, but 
This is a little deceiving, but they're a lot larger than this. So, so this was a male plant that's uh, mainly comprised of pollen, but it's beyond being expired. It's just dust now. Uh, beautiful specimen. These just put out uh, new leaves. The new ones aren't as hard as cardboard yet, like the uh, adults established ones. They're still a little soft and haven't hardened off. But I wanted to also show you the beautiful caudex that's developing here. It's probably eight inches in diameter, bigger than a softball. Uh, as the plant grows and you trim off the bottom ones when they expire, you'll see more and more of that caudex. But you can see all the uh, weaponry that the cycad has, uh, very sharp spines even on the uh, leaf stems. Like again, I said earlier, they evolve to protect and for survival against uh, worldwide predators. I'd like to mention two very unique and diverse palm and cycad gardens that I've been to. One is local, uh, open to the public. It's in St. Petersburg, uh, Gisela Copsic Palm and Cycad Arboretum in St. Petersburg, right on the Gulf. Oh gee, it's, it's beautiful. I, I've been there about a half a dozen times. It really shows you the diversity of the cycads and what can live in Central Florida. Uh, if anyone's down there, I suggest and highly recommend you take a look into it. It's a beautiful open park uh, that you can enjoy by yourself or with your family or friends. Also, second is uh, Fairchild, Fairchild Tropical Botanical Garden in Coral Gables, Florida also has another extensive palm and cycad garden uh, and that, it's a very uh, educational place to take a look at. If anyone has any questions,